the screen. They were really good. Thank you. You know, We ask for your blessing as we share about our new organ today. May we receive this gift with the joy it was given by those who now reside with you in the church triumphant. All praise and glory to you. Amen. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to go into a little bit about the organ that we'll be receiving. The last couple of Sundays, we've teased you with a little bit of information about him. Same one. Oh. Are you on the slideshow? Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah, we'll get this worked out. You should be looking at a picture of the organ, and you will be soon. It's very, very neat. <laughs> Sleek, a slightly smaller than what's there. Uh, because the, the technology, you know, has, has increased in the past 30 years, so uh, it'll have a little bit less of a footprint, and it'll be on casters, so we can roll it around. Uh, I don't know if you've seen me moving things about uh, in that area with different groups playing. Uh, I'll be, you know, sometimes it'll be out front of the choir if I'm playing, or maybe it'll be off to the side, or for a recital, I might bring it over into the middle of the room. And, uh, or when nobody else is watching on Friday nights, you'll find it probably in the middle of the room. <laughs> is it, uh, maybe start the presentation? I did. Do I go on the screen now? We had this all worked out. We did. Before church. I believe he did. <laughs> Those, uh, those PowerPoint re reopen it. Well, I guess we could jump to a uh, Q&A if somebody had a question. John. When you move the organ console, is there a big bunch of wires you need to take with it? Or is it like it just wire? be one cord, one, one, wire. one little digital wire, okay. which is very different than what's there now. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're in. Back to the team. Yeah, you're good. 
Yeah. If you push it there. There it goes. It's not changing here. Strange. It is very strange. And there are no mouse anymore. Yeah. Now it's yellow. Are you doing that or? Doing what? I'm not changing doing all the thingies. I'm trying to find the mouse. <laughs> well, you can see this wonderfully done presentation. <laughs> um, anybody see a mouse moving yet? So what did you think of the order? <laughs> there it is. It's hard to describe. <laughs> it's easy to move. It's indescribable. <laughs> okay, here we're, we're, we're in business now. We're in now. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we have the last couple of Sundays teach you about with a little information about our new organ. So what you might be asking yourself is what makes a meta organ works organ so special? A software created by a company called Hauptwerk. Hauptwerk recreated the sound of world-renowned pipe organs by recording every note on each manual and the pedals with every stop possible. That is sometimes 10,000 notes for just one organ. Three microphones set in three different locations were used to record every note. With a possible 10,000 notes each recorded three times, that's up to 30,000 recordings recreating the unique characteristics of each pipe, bringing texture and humanity to the sound of this organ. These recordings even replicate the acoustics of the room in which the original organ resides. A curated high-end digital platform and a built-by-hand case made in the centuries-old tradition of pipe organs complete this special organ. I think the creator and founder of Meta, Work, Meta Organ Works can explain the technical details better than I can. Pause for a minute to get the sound Of course. Try Church in Portland, Oregon. It's one of his big magnum opuses. That's a Borden. Here's the principal. And there's a crumb horn. There's a little Hachimana. And for fun, that's the last.
greatest attribute. If you come around the back of the organ, I built a bypass door cabinet, a music cabinet. Open it up, you put your hymnals, you put your hand shoes in there. Uh, this little device is kind of fun, it's an add-on, and when you make your recordings, you can load them into this device, and then you have a remote control, so you can go out to the room, and you can initiate your recordings. Kind of a fun new development. So the days I'm not here. <laughs> Built these to fit Pearson's course. So they go in there, you have to control that the music. Um, this, I spent a lot of time trying to get the back right. I didn't want any screws on the back. So this is a keystone piece. It has these nice cute little ball bearing clips in there. It holds that on. And then this panel comes out like that. That's classy. This panel comes out like this. So easy access. This is most of what the organ built. There's no reason the organ needs to be back here, but I'm back here, so I want it to make it easy to get in and out. <laughs> this is our computer. We worked really hard to get a rock solid computer. Lots of uh, uh, various uh, convolutions to get to this point where it was silent and really delivered everything we were looking for. Uh, over here, we have power switching aspects. Um, up here, we have a little board that turns everything on and off correctly. And with so much equipment, that actually was tough to do. It took us a few years of work and very, trying various things, and we ended up having to basically invent a board, a little circuit board that can get that job done. Uh, so, kind of proud of that. Over here is the audio system. It's just sitting here now, so obviously this will all be in the church, in the chamber. You won't just see it sitting around like this. But, um, and I'm still, this is not supposed to be there. <laughs> I'm still experimenting. But I wanted to show you these boxes. So the speakers are all self-contained. There's two channels in each of these speaker carriage. I call it a carriage. But I wanted to find a way that I could um, quickly adjust the direction and the angle of the speakers. Because I found in past installations, at the direction, what you do with the speakers in the chamber is huge. It can make, a, make and break the sound of the organ. So I wanted to be able to move these speakers around without having to like, um, you know, physically move and you know have to do a lot of crazy things. So this carriage has a can mechanism. So you can use the can mechanism and it can go all the way down. So you could indirect, you know, shoot the sound at the ceiling. And then they come up and they click in like that. And then you come up to like 45. And if you need to get to 90 degrees, you loosen these knobs on the side and then it slides back through and then it's 90 degrees. So very quickly we can do a lot of experimentation when we get to the church. Every acoustic, every church is different and it requires many you know, a lot of time and energy to try to get that right. So I've worked really hard and done a lot of research on getting that right. Also, um, you know, this is a very important piece of push right here. This takes the digital signals and turns them into analog. So if you're ever um, building your own home system, don't skimp on the audio interface. Do your research and buy the best audio interface you can afford. That one's like 6,000 bucks. <laughs> so, uh, it is top of the line. So I'm excited to be able to work with like really good audio. You know, these speakers, I've done much research and uh, these are the best speakers I've come up with that I've, I've ran across so far. All right, thank you, thanks for listening. Take care. And that, that is Daniel Lemieux. He used his introduction at the beginning. He is the gentleman who founded Meta Organ Works and who is building our organ and there's a bi the biography on the table is about him. And he plays the organ in socks. He does. <laughs> That's how I knew he was my buddy already. <laughs> he come with it? He come. Oh. <laughs> Just for a week. <laughs> Thank you.
I think, hopes that there are people that understand the technology as well as Justin They will, they will. It's, it's, it'll be simpler to fix this new organ than it is to fix the old organ. Okay. Way simpler. Recently, a few members of council, Pastor Bill, Justin, and Tom and Marilyn Hawks, had the chance to hear a new organ utilizing the Hopsburg software at the United Methodist Church in Fort Orchard. Let's hear what they had to say. Having heard many of the finest pipe organs in Europe, the sound bursting forth from the organ we heard down at Port Orchard literally took my breath away. We will be blessed to have this new addition to our church. I know Justin and Bill with their trained ears get this, but those of us with marginal or non-existent musical education also heard it. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. No matter what one's expectations were before we heard their new organ, everyone, to a person, was given an experience so far greater and breathtaking than was imaginable. To think that we will get to share those same extraordinary sounds in our church is exciting. And Scott, you were there. That's your quote. What, do you have anything else to say? It was exciting. It, I, I know not very much about instruments. And when I was going in, Sorry. when I was uh, going in uh, to the church, I was totally amazed because it was different than what we hear here. And I think the last time I really heard a pipe organ was probably when I was about 20. And uh, I was amazed then, and of course I, it's worn off. But you cannot believe how pure the sound is. And when you select just a, one instrument or two instruments and you play it, it is so clear and comes out. And today when I was sitting in church listening, it was almost as though it had on a, a mask, like we used to wear. It was so open when we went to Port Orchard. And all of you are going to have an opportunity to hear that in July. July 16th. 16th. 16th of July, and it's like at 3 o'clock, which is a Sunday after church. We've been invited over to hear that in the church because they have uh, an organ very much like the one we have. The electronics and the, uh, the speaker setup is very similar. It's a different body, but it has all the same bells and whistles that we hear. And it is exciting. It's, it's so pure that it just gives you chills. And that's what we experienced uh, just four weeks ago. Great. Thank you. So that's July 16th, 3 p.m. It's their dedication concert for their new organ at Port Orchard United Methodist. And I'll be playing uh, half the recital as well as their organist, Christopher. So, how is this a versatile instrument beyond having nine different pipe organs? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Ableton Live is a software that works with the components of the instrument when you want a sound other than an organ. With 5,000 plus instrument voices, it can move from bluegrass to Broadway with a push of a few virtual buttons. This is truly is a special organ with something for everyone. So let's recap. We're going to have a virtual pipe organ with nine different pipe organs. These are all the types of pipe organs we will have. Plus, we'll have four bonus instruments, two more organs, a harpsichord, and a Belgium carillon. I don't know if you know what a carillon is. is I have bells? to look it up. <laughs> bells. It's bells. bells. It's wonderful. Yeah. Plus, the ability to have 5,000 plus instruments at our fingertips. We believe we will have it all in one organ console designed with our worship in mind and crafted specifically for SLC. So we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have now. Kevin? 
Yeah. Is the uh, speaker system Bluetooth controlled, like the axis of the speakers? No. Okay, it's all direct wire? Yeah, the, so Bluetooth is like consumer-based quality. And so you saw that little box that he showed and said that was $6,000. Yeah. You can't, Bluetooth is like this much information. The information that for each one of those sounds is phenomenal. It could not be transferred over Bluetooth. Okay. So it'll be a, it'll be a cord. The other question, does it have a piano mode? Yeah, so so, Ab so what makes this one different and one of a kind in the entire planet is that Ableton software. Nobody's ever done that, and when I asked other organ builders, they looked at me like I was crazy. Like, why would you want your organ to sound like a piano, or a flute, or play Broadway music? And I said, because I want to. And so, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, why can't the organ do what my little keyboard can do, you know? so. That has been, people have used Ableton on keyboards, but never in an organ console. So with Ableton, it has every sound ever in the synthesizer box. So I can play drums with my feet on, on it. It'll be any sound except with an organ. So with the three, three manuals and the memory buttons and the foot pedals, but with the modern capabilities, what I can do with the synthesizer. So if you saw the Christmas pageant where I had three synthesizers stacked, and I was filling in all the French horns and the, the stuff like that that I didn't couldn't get live. I'll be able to do that from the organ. So you're gonna be the mad scientist, right? Gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe currently those speakers or so on are up above the altar area. Yes. Where we also yeah, store stored and stuff. No, we don't. No. That's the way it is. Anyway, where, where will the speakers be located? That's question number one. Question two, given that remote, will you be able to play the organ from home on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, to answer the first question, the speakers are up there, and the fire marshal will not let us store things up there um, because there's no way to get in and out. It's a ladder only. Uh, so, the speakers will go up where they were. And that's going to be one of my fun jobs later this month is me and Lisa are hooking up a hoist and bringing down the old speaker. The old subwoofer is the size of a deep freezer and weighs about 300, 400 pounds. Uh, and we're pulling it down the ladder. Uh, so, uh, it, yeah, they will all be up there. And the remote, I had one time when I was like 16, I had to take a, summer off, a Sunday off. I did take Sundays off back then, one one. And uh, I programmed all the service into my keyboard, and I had my girlfriend at the time push the button, and nobody knew I was gone. <laughs> I'm not sure if I was happy about that or sad. But... <laughs> That's a story you shouldn't be telling. <laughs> it took me twice as long to program the recordings than it would have taken me to play them on Sunday morning. My, I have job security. I'm not afraid. So I was going to say, what is your learning curve? But it sounds like you probably already got it made. Uh, well, every organ is a little different. Now, it looks like this is very complicated, but if you just push the on button, the screens will automatically pop on and it'll look like whatever organ was loaded. So if you knew nothing about a computer, but you were an organist and you came in and you pushed the on button, it would look and behave exactly like any other pipe organ. And you would just Put, hit the stops, instead of pulling them out, you just push, hit them what it looks like. And so, if you had played the Cabot Cole in Portland, which is one of the organs we're getting, you would, the, the pictures on the screen would look exactly like if you were sitting at that organ console at, at the Trinity Episcopal in Portland. And you'd hit the button and it would sound exactly like if you pulled that stop out there, with no computer knowledge. Now, switching it, there will be some learning for me. Uh, I haven't done a lot with Ableton. It's it's the synthesizer software and and manipulating the different organs. But there's a learning curve with any organ. You know, it, it they're they're all a little bit different. Uh, this one is going to be simpler. Uh, it'll be very simple. It seems complicated, but only if you want it to be. My question. I've got about three of them. <clears throat> I, and you, you more or less answered the last one. So if we get a different organist, which I hope we never do, I <laughs> fear forever, is this organ going to be one that it has a lot of bells and whistles, but nobody but you know how to play it really well? That's question one. 
And question two is, has Appleton, where, where else are they putting organs in? Are they really new? Do they have any track record? Does it come with a warranty of any kind? And, um, let's see, I had another one. I'll quit with that. Okay, uh, one, yes, other organists will love this organ. Um, it's one of the, the more linen, the, <laughs> more inexpensive options when I was considering which to go with was one that had the bells and whistles but did not behave like an organ. It was more like a, a keyboard. Uh, and I would have been able to been okay with it, but an organist would have been, no, you know, another organist would not have liked it. So what we are buying is an organ from an organ builder that behaves and looks exactly like an organ. So. Uh, other organists will love this instrument, besides me. Just like I'm going to this one in Port Orchard, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's the best organ I've ever played. And uh, yeah. Two, yes, it comes with a warranty. Uh, so Dan, who you can read about, is uh, well established. He's built many, many organs around. Some of the ones we've been hearing in preludes are his organs that we've been playing. Um, and uh, he offers technical support in perpetuity. But the bigger thing, as far as maintenance goes, is the old organ was Rogers. You have to buy Rogers parts. You have to use the Rogers guy, and he's really expensive. This new organ is just a supercomputer and an audio system. Anybody can fix the audio system that knows anything about stereos. You know, The supercomputer, anybody that knows anything about computers can fix that computer. It's open sourced. There's no, you know, so we can have a local person when it ever needs to be repaired or upgraded. Uh, whereas before it was proprietary and you could not find the parts and stuff like that. So yes, warranty. Yes, other people will love this. So Justin, you were mentioning a, was it clarion or the the pipe the big Bells. the big instrument the, the anyway they have one in in Victoria that they play every day at noon. If you were going to Victoria yeah. and they play that instrument yeah. there. Oh, the carol on the bell, the, the bell tower, yeah. Yeah, so they play that every day, so that's what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, that's those yeah. bells, and, yeah. and some of those are done by people actually mm -hmm. pulling these big ropes. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll have to put a speaker on the outside of the building and I'll play every day at noon. <laughs> <laughs> the apartment <laughs> complex would love that. We were there they had players from all over the world come in every, every, for a few days and put every different players to play it. It's really, really good. They have they have it at Holden Village, and the, I was up there as a as a musician one time, and I didn't know that the speakers were outside, and so I woke everybody up, <laughs> and they weren't all that thrilled by that. <laughs> you know how they have a call to worship, so you could do the carol on five minutes before service begins, so that those of us that live close by can say, "Oh, get your girdle on." Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Justin? Yeah. Uh, Scott's fine. Oh, um, on the internals, is the computer that is in there, is that a commercial computer that they've chosen and put in, or is it their special design? And likewise, the speakers, are those special design? And the box, the digital analog converter, is that a commercial one, or is that their own special design? Uh, they're commercial products that he, he very carefully selected and builds from from uh, you know the supplies of where you can buy, so it, it, the computer and this is the part that kind of goes over my head. But uh, so he bought pieces. You know he didn't solder them himself, uh, and uh, the audio system also. So it's it's specially compiled and chosen based off commercially available pieces. Yeah. Uh, we had a question here. Yeah, it's Joyce. Joyce. Yeah, it's me. Um, I'm am my understanding that Daniel will come and he will install yes. the organ yes. and the speakers help you with that yes and he, I won't have to do anything and will he train you on yes. this organ he will be here for a week oh in the end of August August 24th uh, through the week and he's also going to give us a recital oh, uh, so wonderful. he's going to play the first recital on it 
Uh, that way I don't have to, when I just learn how to use it. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, but so yeah, he'll be here the end of August and he'll stay for the week. And so, cause part of an organ, you don't know what it sounds like until it's in the room. So a lot of the work has to be done here. Yeah. And, and that's where those speakers kind of move and he can adjust the, 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 tim, the timbers and reverb tails and the way each sound sounds so that it sounds perfectly in our room. And this is where building a virtual organ is so much superior to building a pipe organ. Because once you build the pipes and you put them in the room, that's what it sounds like. And try, if you get it in the room and it doesn't, you want to tweak it just a little bit, you know what you have to do? Build the whole thing again. Or build the room again. Whereas so here we can you know, finesse things in just a way to make, to make the, the, the sound waves absolutely perfect for our building. It'll be like playing a guitar and you strum the string, but the guitar is the wavelength, the, you know, the neck of the guitar is all the way across the room. So each note just perfectly resonates in our sanctuary. And what is the remodeling that needs to do? Is it just around that speaker piece? No, no remodeling. That's no just remodeling. if you were to build a pipe organ, you're probably going to have to remodel your room. Oh, yeah. sorry. So that, that's oh, just I misunderstood information. that. Yeah. Yeah. Our decision process, why to go with the virtual pipe organ rather than a real pipe organ. Mm -hmm. uh, Got it. I misunderstood this line. Great. Are the, um, Organs and stuff burned into firmware, or are they on hard drive? Hard drive, and we could change. So that's the thing that where it's updatable. So he has chosen for us 10, basically, uh, or 11, nine big ones, two small ones, and the bells and that, that he's going to tailor to our room. And those, those nine are the, you know, all I'll ever need. It'll be more than I'll ever need. But... If we wanted to change and get a new sample set, a new organ, you could download that from Halfair and you know have to tailor it into our room, and then we could play it. But it, it would be something that I wouldn't do, not for a long, long time. But Halfair has been going around and recording all the major pipe organs. They've gotten most of them, but there's a lot. And so they might come up with a new sample set that we just are dying to have, and we could update it uh, with just, you know, Log in and update. Lynn. Are you sure our sanctuary isn't big enough to download the health fair of Notre Dame in Paris? <laughs> there is a sample set for Notre Dame in Paris. Uh, we have the Trinity Episcopal. We want that French, French uh, romantic sound, which is and, and, and so Dan chose that instead of Notre Dame. Notre Dame is very special and very specific and huge. Uh, so its organ would, uh, it would be a little much, but there would be a time and a place for that. Uh, <laughs> maybe sometime. I'll download it into my little 20 by seven um, sewing room where I put my organ console that I need to hook up to help there. There you go, that would be perfect. Put the headphones on and you're in Paris. <laughs> <clears throat> That's Lynn. Any other questions? Just to be our choir. Mm -hmm. Just a comment. One of my most fun parts about going to Port Orchard and listening to that was Pastor Bill fell in love with the flute. Yeah. And he kept, can you play that again? Can you play that again? Can you play that again? Because <laughs> you could hear the chopping, whatever the heck that is. Mm -hmm. it was the sound was so authentic. It, it really was absolutely authentic sound. I, I, and I'm, yeah, I, I I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't know that it would be that good until I saw it in the Port Orchard instrument, which is going to be very simple, you know, almost identical to what we're getting. I, I knew the technology had improved. I knew it was going to be good, but when I went and played Christopher's organ at, at Port Orchard United Methodist, it's the best organ I've ever played. And I played on billion dollar pipe organs. I like the little one in Port Orchard better. So not just as good, it's better. Uh, we're getting short, and I just wanna say one quick thing. Are you gonna say anything about the benevolences? No. So I just wanna say one thing while you know it's Memorial Day, we're remembering those who had fallen, and, and just do yourself, your family a favor, plan your, your memorial service, plan your gifts, because uh, this organ was, was purchased by one of, uh, one of you dear members who planned their gifts and was very, very generous. 
Um, and so I want to just thank thank that and to commend to you that uh, you know don't wait till don't wait till the end to till do it. You know, do it now. Make, make the plan now before uh, somebody else plans for you. Don't wait till you die. It's yes, that's yeah, right. We are very grateful for um, those who have joined the church triumphant and left us a piece of their legacy because this is now their legacy to SLC. And so these beloved members have have given us a gift and um, and we're very grateful for that. And I think we will, I, I hope you feel their love the first time you get to hear Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you for the presentation.